you are looking at the very first commercial ship, the Balsa 94, to pass through the newly opened channel here at Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse since it collapsed a month ago on April 26th. It is so amazing how what we thought would take months to clear this channel, they were able to do it in under one month. So there you can see the red and the green buoy markers there to mark that new limited access channel on the right hand side. And remember the federal channel is sort of where the green markers are over towards the dolly and the federal channel actually goes halfway through the dolly's body there. The dolly is actually sticking out part way into the original federal channel. So you can see how nice and clear that all looks through there and what a great sight it is to see that. All ships passing through the channel now must be pulled through by tugboats. So this new limited access channel will be open for about a week or so, and then they're going to shut it down for a couple of weeks while they dismantle everything off of Dally and move Dally out of the way. And there it is passing nicely between the channel markers. Every ship needs the tugboats, too close to Dolly for comfort. And by the way, the Secretary of the Navy, Christine Wormuth, was in town yesterday there and toured the site and the area prior to them opening up the new limited access channel today. As we look at this photo that the Army Corps of Engineers provided for us this morning, I'm surprised that the ship is passing over here. This is more or less in the center. I would have expected they were going to be coming over here, and certainly previous infographics that they gave us seem to indicate that the limited access channel was going to be here in this area. So when they laid down these channel buoys right over here the other day, I guess this is where they set it. You can see how the channel starts way back over here, comes around, and pops out right here and I believe that our two missing guys are in this area somewhere right in here but there's the entire scene how it looks next to the dolly so the Army Corps of Engineers had this morning's events well documented of course with photographs catching it every step of the way here and remember this is their first time through so they're double checking triple checking everything here to make sure it goes through there it is it's already passed through the bridge and there it is now heading off towards the chesapeake and while we're on the topic of this bridge if you remember my famous my infamous fbi truck here that i showed you guys on my video of last week where I talked about this truck and was trying to figure out exactly what were they doing with all of this equipment up here. Are they using it for comms? Some people think it's for comms. Some people think it's for repeaters or for cell phone service. I think some of this was for jamming the drones that people were flying into the area because they were having a big problem with the drones in the area there. Now, we don't know who owns this van because it is unmarked. It's fairly discreet, you know, unless they covered up the logo or something. This is why I, I think it is the FBI because it's got that federal black color that they love to use, you know. But if you were gonna use an FBI marked vehicle like this, you, you know, and you were trying to be more discreet about it, you'd probably wanna go with something this. It's a little less discreet, it might not tip people off that you're a federal truck or something. So Flowers by Irene, I think would really trick people into thinking this is something else. And then when I checked here on marine traffic, five and a half hours later, she's already about to enter the Chesapeake Bay. And here's the fast track of when the Balsa 94 left the port earlier this morning. And here it is coming through and it's getting ready to pass by the dolly right there. And then it's cleared the channel and it is out heading out towards the Chesapeake. So here you can see on the tracker as it's passing through, the channel has now moved from the center to right over here where the limited access channel is now. And this is the set of the four pillars where they removed that truss piece from the other day. That one that finally was the straw that broke the camel's back and allowed them to free up this part of the deep access channel where they're at 35 feet here it's at 50 feet deep here, right in the middle of the federal channel, with the dolly positioned right over here. And then Fort Carroll is down over here on the lower right. So it looked like it was a textbook move there under the control of those tugboats. And even the Streamtime Live Cam got in on the action too. It captured the whole sequence as they were towing this Balsa 94 ship through the channel there and past the dolly ship. 
So here it is right now coming up onto the dolly ship, as you can see right there. And then here is the balsa now clearing the front of the dolly. It's about to pass completely through the channel there. And man, that's the point right there where we wish that dolly had been and not veered off course and crashed into the pillars there. But there you can see it heading right by the very pillars that just a few short days ago had all sorts of bridge trusses wrapped all around it. And now she's free to go, free to move about the country. So at this point here, it has now cleared the entire Francis Scott Key Bridge area and it's heading off. And then we can see about 15 minutes after the balsa came up from behind the dally, it is finally cleared and then the tugboats will begin to separate themselves. Now personally, I would have felt a little better if they had stayed on another five or 10 minutes or so, because you know, you never know what can happen with these ships. What if they lose power and then all of a sudden turn around and then head right back to Dolly? That I think would be the worst case scenario of what could happen, just like the Dolly crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So, yep, yeah, anything can happen, but I guess these guys know what they're doing, and they're professionals. And these guys really hit the ground running, folks, because they're going like gangbusters now. Barely an hour and a half later, here comes the next ship. So, all of these ships that I believe were likely stuck at port when this happened are now finally being released. This was a quite the welcome relief for the crew members aboard these ships as well as the longshoremen that were likely hanging around looking for work. But remember, this is going to be a short-lived glory because, like I mentioned, they are going to close this new limited access channel probably sometime next week so that they can get started on getting the dolly up and out of there. And it's going to be a very difficult task removing the dolly because they have to very precariously cut up the bridge truss that's over the dolly into sections so yep. a little bit over an hour later we got this next behemoth coming through here and this was a big old boy right here and so this one launched looks like around uh, probably around one o'clock or so so it, it seems to be that they're moving quite along here at a pretty good rate getting these ships out of there and just look at this dramatic transformation over the last few days. Remember, this is what it looked like a few days ago with the fallen bridge truss wrapped all the way around the bridge pier. And then this is what it looked like as they were getting ready to move it out of the area. And then completing the transformation here as the Chesapeake 1000 crane hauls off that bridge truss to Sparrows Point. Oh, and just a reminder, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to watch this other video that I did on the FIU bridge collapse. You will love that one. One of my best ones yet. And then check out this other video here also on how to install laminate flooring in your house because I do all sorts of engineering projects here for you. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see all of you on the next one.